Inside of Vine 3 d if you go to Blender to the Physics tab, you can essentially go ahead and apply physics to any sort of object you like. And here I can have dynamic physics that is active. You can see down here it says in the Omri properties, dynamic. If you change it to passive, it updates it to static. And if you activate the check mark, it turns it into kinematic. Those are the three types of rigid bodies we can have within our scene. So let's set this one to be our ground cube, the flat one, which is passive. And this top one is going to be active with a collision object of a cube and obviously we can augment the mass and whatever we want. We can also adjust a bunch of other settings like bounce and friction to avoid it sliding or to make it bounce a bit more. And when we play this you can see that there is physical interaction between these two objects. So you can see the object falls down and it rests on the uh, lower cube. Now what we can do is we can go ahead to the collection tab and down here we have a bunch of different cubes. And what these mean, uh, essentially each one is a different collection. So if I put this one on a different layer and now play it, you can see that the objects do not actually interact. The top object falls right through because it's on a different layer. These different layers essentially act as planes of existence, as different dimensions, different universes inside your computer essentially. Essentially what this means is that you can have all the properties of uh, the rigid body, of the different gravity, friction, bounce and all that stuff, but you don't actually need to apply it to the entire world. For example, you can separate out the objects. The objects can fall using gravity, but with no interactions, while still having an active rigid body. So it allows you a lot more control over what is actually happening in your scene instead of having a single uh, global simulation that you can't really control. But there's a lot more to this because although we have different collections that act as different universes that are games that are running separately from each other and they're not aware of each other's existence so their physics and collisions and all that stuff is calculated within their respective collections or within their respective universes. However, there's a lot more because we have collection masks and this takes us into a whole new realm because some objects can be in one collection but can still see objects from another collection so that they're essentially wearing a mask that makes them look like like they're from that collection as well, even though they're not. So in essence, the physics collections determines which dimensions you're actually running these object simulations in, and the masks allow you to determine which objects can interact with each dimension. And so these objects can't uh, be in the same universe and interact, so you, can, you have to use a mask to make them look like they're in the same universe, and they can interact like that. It's a very useful thing to have a lot more control. It might be a bit uh, hard to understand because there are so many different layers, but essentially, uh, if you just play around with it, it's very easy to understand and grasp, and it allows for a lot of physics-related possibilities if that's something that you're into. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you understood, and I'll see you again someday.